So hopefully you've already watched the video uh, from Ted Ed talking about rates of reactions and how to get chemical reactions to either speed up or slow down. Uh, in section 9.2 now we're going to be looking at some chemical equilibrium. So we're going to apply kind of the general concepts that you learned in the TED video uh, now towards what we call equilibrium. So what we're going to be looking at now is um, what we call a reversible reaction. So a lot of the time in chemistry so far, we ha we've been talking about reactions that just go to completion. So we start with reactants and we end with products. In chemical equilibrium, what happens is we have a reversible reaction that occurs. So basically, we're going to take a reactant and form a product, but at the same time, we can also go in the reverse direction and some of the products will go back to form reactants. Okay, so it's going to have a forward and a reverse direction. So if we look at an example of this, we've actually been seeing examples of reversible reactions. We just haven't uh, specifically said that they are reversible. But basically any of our weak electrolytes are a reversible reaction. And the way that we identify that is from that double reaction arrow. So the forward and the reverse arrow. So if we look at, um, this is acetic acid or vinegar. This is a weak electrolyte. It's going to partially dissociate, which we represented using that double reaction arrow. Okay, so it's going to, uh, some of our reactants are going to split apart into uh, the H plus, that's a proton, um, hydrogen ion, same concept. We'll talk about this more specifically in chapter 10. And then we have, uh, this is called the acetate ion. Not that you need to know that, uh, but just FYI. Um, so what happens is we have a reactant here. It's going to split apart into its ions, but we also have a reverse reaction where some of our ions are going to recombine to form our initial product. Okay. This uh, arrow, the double reaction arrow, is what's representing that we have a reversible reaction. That's how we know that it is reversible. Now, when we have a uh, re reversible reaction that basically settles, um, so it comes to its end, even though we still have reactants and products left, uh, we call that equilibrium, which is what this whole uh, chapter is about. And our definition of our equilibrium occurs when the rate of the forward reaction, so the rate at which it splits apart, is the same as the rate of it going back together. Okay, so the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse. Now notice I didn't say that it stops reacting. Okay, and in a chemical equilibrium, we're always going to be going back and forth, but the rate at which we go forward is equal to the rate at which we go in the reverse direction.
Another thing to note about uh, chemical equilibrium, okay, so it's the rate of the forward reaction is re equal to the rate of the reverse direction. Okay, so we're always going to be moving back and forth. Um, basically what happens when we observe this is that there's not going to be an overall change in concentration of our reactants and our products. Okay, the concentration will remain constant even though we're going back and forth um, constantly. Okay. So that's kind of our basic introduction to chemical equilibrium. We're going to start looking at these chemical equilibriums um, by looking at what we call equilibrium constant expressions. It will allow us to do some calculations of figuring out what exactly this concentration of all three or more components, um, basically what that concentration is. Okay, and then at the end of chapter nine, we're gonna take a system or a equilibrium and we are going to add something to it or take stuff away. We're basically going to change it and we're gonna try and see how that equilibrium is gonna to react to get back to equilibrium. And that's with Le Chantelier's principle.